And the more I talked to them, the more I could see lie after lie after lie. And finally I said, you know what? I don't need to be in a religion full of liars. Sheikh Yusuf Estes calls the authors of the Bible liars. He calls Christianity a religion of liars. Since he describes himself as a former Christian preacher, his testimony can sound weighty. Many Muslims assume that they don't need to study the Bible for themselves since he already has. We will examine Sheikh Estes' claims so that you can see who is truly lying to you. Our hope is that instead of taking others' words on the matter, you will study the Bible for yourself and follow the Jesus you find there. The impression of many Muslims is that Sheikh Estes held a position in the Christian church similar to that of an imam, but he sometimes admits he was never a priest or a pastor. He was simply someone who led singing and occasionally spoke in the church. Well, first of all, a lot of people think I was a preacher, but more than anything in the churches, I was more of a music minister because I spent my time with pianos, organs, music, and, and the sales of musical instruments. So as far as the preaching, I only filled in when the preacher wasn't going to be there. So then I would give the sermons. Sheikh Estes' humor and eloquence give the impression that he is a knowledgeable and honest man. But the reality is that he consistently lies about the Bible and the Christian faith. Here is what he says about Christianity. After all, Christianity is the easiest religion in the world. There isn't anything easier than Christianity. You just say the magic words, you don't have to pray. You don't have to fast. You don't have to make hajj. You don't have to pay zakah. You don't have to grow a beard. You don't have to wear a hijab. You don't have to do anything except hope that it's going to work. <laughs> there are people who call themselves Christians and have such views, just as there are people who call themselves Muslims and ignore the teachings of the Quran. People who pick and choose what they believe should not be used to define Islam. But Sheikh Estes uses people like this to define Christianity. Compare his claims with what Jesus actually said in the Bible. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Anyone who claims that Christianity is the easiest religion in the world is defining it very, very differently than Jesus did. The cross Jesus calls his disciples to take up was not a piece of jewelry, but the instrument of their own death. As to Sheikh Estes' claim about saying magic words, Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Sheikh Estes knows what the Bible says. But instead of dealing with its actual teachings, he tries to discredit it by misrepresentation. So we want to talk about the Bible and tell him about the message that comes in the Bible. What we were trying to do it though, the priest, he had a different Bible because the Catholic Bible doesn't really match the Protestant Bible. Then my father had a different Bible that he had had since he was little. And then my wife had a different Bible. So we had four, five different Bibles sitting on the table talking about, oh no, my Bible is right. No, your Bible is wrong. No, this Bible over here, now it says, but I could use part of that Bible to blah, 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 blah. And then I realized my friend, the Muslim, he's sitting over there like this, watching us argue about the Bible. So I turned to him and I said, uh, 
How many versions of that Quran do you guys have? How many versions? And he said, actually, we don't have versions. It's only one. One Quran. I said, huh. Wow. Sheikh Estes loves to present the Bible as confusing because there are different English translations from the original Hebrew and Greek. He not only ignores that there are different English translations of the Quran, but there are different versions in Arabic as well. Many Muslims just simply have this, uh, the simplistic idea uh, that there has only been one version of the Quran throughout history, and, and that's the version that we're holding now. And when we read our history, we see, in fact, that there were variations, multiple readings uh, that were uh, sanctioned, uh, the multiple readings that are sanctioned in our tradition, and uh, they do not know how to come to grips with that. The first question which arose in my mind uh, when I began studying and teaching the subject was, that currently there are five different versions of the Qur'an found in the Muslim Ummah. Now this might be a startling revelation for most of you, but then for academic circles this is nothing new. So we have five different versions of the Qur'an circulating in the Muslim Ummah. We have this famous version, or I would say the Rivaya of Hafs from Asim, uh, which is the Qur'an, uh, which is taught in most parts of the Muslim Ummah and which is known to most of us. And these Qur'ans, as I would point out, are actually named after a, a famous reciter which, who used to recite the Qur'an in a particular way. And when I say reciter, it does, not mean, it does not merely refer to pronunciation. It also refers to variation in words. So when I say there are five versions, it means that there are five different versions which have different words at times. There are verbs which are different. There are nouns which are different. There is a difference between a plural and singular. There are differences between declensions or the Arab, and then we have other differences as well. Sheikh Estes also pretends that any scribal error in any manuscript makes the Bible untrustworthy, even if they are easily corrected. He pretends the Quran doesn't have the same issues. And I'm going to ask you, what are the chances that somebody speaking Arabia, the Arabic language, living 1,400 years ago in the desert, could recite 6,237 verses, all in Arabic, and have it exactly memorized and passed down for 30 generations without a single loss of a single word, or even a vowel marker, or even a dot. It's impossible, except if it came from Allah. Despite Sheikh Estes' claims, the Quran has not been perfectly preserved. The fourth question which confronted me in this regard was that as I read through various research manuals and histories of the Quran, I found, and obviously this is something which is of established nature, that the Quran we have today has scribal errors, scriptural errors, errors in the script. And we find that these are numerous. Thus, for example, we have uh, extra vowels mentioned in various places which are regarded as redundant. They are written, but they are regarded as redundant by the oral tradition. We have extra alifs, we have extra uh, yas, and we have extra vavs. Sheikh Estes will often quote the Bible when it agrees with him, but then claims it is contradictory or corrupted when it disagrees with him. When he can't dismiss a text entirely, he simply lies about it. Here he was questioned about the opening of John's Gospel, where it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was God. Actually, it said in even Kone Greek, the word God. It didn't say was in the past tense or future or present tense of any verb. It just said the word God. Not only would Sheikh Estes' reading, word God, make no sense, but every Greek manuscript of John's Gospel has the verb he says isn't there. Literally it reads, Theos, God, Ain was halagos, 
the Word. The Word was with God, so there is distinction. Yet the Word was God, so there is identity. John is explicitly saying that in the beginning, Jesus already was God. Shagestus doesn't want to admit that, so he lies about the Greek and then tries to confuse things even more. The, the, what I'm saying, Allah gave you, is because you took this and I don't know how you could get a reference to any person at all. There's no name mentioned here. And there's no name mentioned in my Bible either. It just said, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. It said the Word was God, but of course we know that that's not what it says. And the Word became flesh. But it doesn't say anybody's name. This could apply to Adam. It could apply to you and me. It could apply to anybody. Sheikh Estes ignores that John made very clear who the Word is. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Sheikh Estes not only tries to rewrite John's gospel, but dismiss everything written by the Apostle Paul. According to the Bible, Paul's real name was Saul. He was a Pharisee. According to other stories, Christian history, he was engaged to the daughter of the high priest, another Pharisee. Her name was Popeia. Historically, we know about her because she's mentioned in the works of Josephus. that She couldn't stand this man. He was an ugly looking person. According to the Bible too, he was not attractive. So she left she broke off the engagement by leaving. She left her dad, or she left her house, she left her religion. She became an actress, a stage person. I don't know if they what they were really acting or dancing, what she did. But Caesar married her. She married Caesar. The Jewish high priest was not a Pharisee, but a Sadducee. These groups were bitter enemies. This kind of confusion is equivalent to someone who claims to be knowledgeable about Islam, and yet claiming that the Saudi royal family are Shiites. As with most of his claims, Sheikh Estes does not give the source of his information. His claims are partially based on the writings of a 4th century Christian by the name of Epiphanius. He wrote about various groups of heretics, including one called the Ebionites. He quotes them as saying about the Apostle Paul, they then claimed that he was Greek and the son of a Greek mother and Greek father, but that he had gone up to Jerusalem, stayed there for a while, desired to marry a daughter of the high priest, and had therefore become a proselyte and been circumcised. But, since he still could not marry that sort of girl, he became angry and wrote against circumcision and against the Sabbath and the legislation. You may notice that many of the details Sheikh Estes gave are missing because they've simply been made up. There was a woman named Popeia who married the Emperor Nero, but she was not the daughter of the high priest or even a Jew. The Ebionites who made the claim that Paul was not a Jew also denied the virgin birth of Jesus. But Sheikh Estes considers them good witnesses so long as they dislike Paul. His final papers were given to him to go to Damascus. Damascus in Syria, where he was going to persecute, again, the people of the way. Along the way, he said he had a blinding light experience. Jesus talked to him, and he became Paul, and began getting all kinds of spiritual revelation through dreams, visions, etc., and everything he had was from that. He never knew Jesus other than through these 
blinding light experiences or whatever they were. Sheik Estes is trying to give the impression that Paul was a Greek who was sharing mystical experiences that contradicted what Jesus and the other apostles taught. It's a lie. If you will only read the Bible for yourself, you will find that Paul carefully reasons from the Old Testament and that he is presenting the same gospel as Jesus and the other apostles. Sheikh Estes also presents other wild claims as real history. The Catholic Church was in business about 300 years before Jesus was born. It's on their website. Don't go like this. It's on their website. That's where I took it from. The Catholic Church was really started in Rome by Alexander the Great. Do you know what the word Catholic means? It means universal. It was the universal church for the Roman Empire. If you didn't join it, you could not be a Roman citizen. And it was opposed to the teachings of Judaism and opposed to the teachings of the early Christians for more than 200 and some years. And they were diametrically opposed to each other to the extent that it was the Romans killing the early Christians. Now, if you understand that and you go to their website and read, they didn't even take over Christianity until the year 325 AD. And when they did, they changed a lot of things. Again, referring to their own website. But if you want to check it in Brand Britannica or Americana or Grolier encyclopedias, go ahead and read about the Catholic Church. Sheikh Estes trusts that most of his audience won't check the Catholic Church's website or the Encyclopedia Britannica, because if they did, they would find out he's lying. Alexander the Great's empire did not include Rome, and there's no evidence he ever visited there. The idea that Alexander created the Catholic Church hundreds of years before Jesus is simply make-believe. There are also numerous false claims that Sheikh Estes makes against the Council of Nicaea and other events in Christian history, but one of the easiest to disprove is this one. Just so you know, 60 years ago, when I was a little guy going to church, nobody said Jesus was Lord or Son uh, or God. They only said Son of God. Jesus is called Lord hundreds of times in the Bible. But Sheikh Estes claims that the church only really embraced it in the 1960s. Another claim that he often makes is that the term Trinity is found nowhere in the Bible. Though he's technically correct, he's trying to confuse his audience. He is taking a Latin word coined in the 3rd century to summarize what the Bible says about the relationship of the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. He says that because this specific term is not used in the Bible, the truth it describes is not there either. By Sheikh Estes' standard, Muslims should not speak of Tawhid or Shahada because neither term is found in the pages of the Quran. Throughout the New Testament, Jesus is identified as God. Rather than dealing with what the Bible actually says, Sheikh Estes tries to confuse his audience with lies and tries to make Christianity appear ridiculous. He says, can you talk to me about your belief in God? What do you believe about God? Which, God is one. He said, do you have Trinity? Yes, God is three. He said, I thought you said he's one. He is one and three. He said, how does that work? Because uh, God can do anything? Sheikh Yusuf Estes calls the authors of the Bible liars, and he calls Christianity a religion of liars. The reality is that he is the one who is the liar. We have another video that helps sort out what the Bible actually says from what others say about it. It's available free at www.quran.video. Our plea to you is to watch it and then read the Bible for yourself. Don't take Yusuf Estes's word, nor our word, for what is true. Read the words of those you admit were the prophets of God in the Bible, and obey them.